we can work with. There it is. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 12 January 2015 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting. Roman one this evening, uh, a town where Christmas never ends, the Holiday <laughs> Lighting Contest Awards, uh, Recreation <laughs> Department Director. Diana Martin, please. Okay, so the Holiday Light Spectacular is the final special event that the Rec Department does each year. And for the 2014 year, we had five winners in the contest. We had three business winners and two homeowner winners. So I'm going to call up the businesses first. First business would be the Ships Inn, winning the best of the beach. Is anyone here from the Ships Inn? Turn that to the camera. <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to call up the Ross Colony, winning the best neighborhood display. And I already said to them that I'm very sorry that their picture does not do justice to that plaque. But <laughs> and then the 401 Tavern, winning the most decorative and inspirational display. And Desi. Okay. So next we'll have the home division with Chris and Cheryl Silver winning the most decorative, excuse me, the most creative design, but unfortunately they couldn't be here tonight. Um, and last but not least, Chris Larravee, who won the People's Choice Award. The light tour, and they all voted on him. That was the winner. People's Choice. Nice job. And I want to thank all the winners <laughs> for decorating and sharing their holiday spirit in the town and in our community. And there are many more beautiful homes and businesses in town this year, and we're hoping to see even more next year. Thank you, Diana. Well done, Director. Thank you very much. Yeah. Roman 2, public comment period. Those wishing public comment, please uh, approach the podium. Last call for public comment. Roman three. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Nine. Good evening, John Nyan, representing Experience Hampton. Uh, just wanted to do, uh, um, ask for your support when you get to the warrant articles. Uh, you will see one from Experience Hampton requesting a, a warrant article for three thousand uh, dollars to continue the uh, tradition of our Hampton Christmas parade which will take place next December. So I would just ask uh, your support uh, in continuing that bond article approval. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. I have some good news for those who are concerned about oil prices. They're down below $50 a barrel for the first time since 2009. That's a fact, not speculation. Anyway, I didn't come here for oil talk. I came here to talk about Warren Articles, which is the topic for tonight's meeting, I understand. And I'm a little concerned that I was perusing the Warren Articles and I saw that there was one or two missing. Particularly the manager's contracts that you've engaged in. Uh, according to the New Hampshire Municipal Association, NHMA, Multi-year contracts need to have a town warrant article, town, war, town meeting approval. You can find on the New Hampshire website, the New Hampshire Municipal Association's website, and perhaps I should wait for the chairman so that he can hear this fully. Mr. Chairman, you can find on the New Hampshire's Municipal Association website a legal opinion regarding uh, multi-year contracts. Of course, we all support the legal opinions of the New Hampshire Municipal Association, as we have all been advised that we should rely upon them for the legal opinions regarding Obamacare and other such matters relative to union contracts. 
to read just the last paragraph, Mr. Chairman, on the New Hampshire Municipal Association website, which you'll ignore me throughout the evening, I'm sure, but that doesn't matter because others will be listening. NHMA says that uh, RSA Chapter 32 provides guidance on this issue. RSA 32 colon 6 provides that appropriations can be made only by a vote of the legislative body. These are quotes from the New Hampshire Municipal Association. It further states that RSA 32 colon 8 provides that neither selectmen nor other officials or employees shall pay or agree to pay any money or incur any liability involving expenditures of money for any purpose in excess of the amount appropriated by the legislative body for that purpose or for any purpose for which no appropriation has been made. Of course, the legislative body being the town meeting, right? Now, obviously, we've engaged in a contract. For example, the town manager's contract, you've extended out to something like 2018, a point in time in which every one of your terms will have long expired, I might point out. And certainly we've, that is to say the town meeting, has appropriated no money yet for 2018, no money for 2017, and no money has been appropriated for 2016. Yet there seems to be uh, some binding nature that you're committing for the legislative body where no appropriation has been made. Anyway, the New Hampshire Municipal Association website goes on and says, quote, since approval of multi-year contracts is in a sense raising and appropriating funds, it seems the Board of Selectmen and other officials and employees are not empowered to enter into multi-year contracts for expenditures without town meeting approval. And I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your lack of attention. My wife went out tonight, so now I feel fulfilled. For the public comment. Hi, my name is Uda Pino, 15 Tuttle F, Hampton, on the beach. I hope you guys support my $5,000 Warren article to bring the Vietnam Wall to Hampton. And uh, I'm, the beach precinct uh, is behind me. They support me all the way through. I spoke with the Legion guy. I forgot what his name is, the new comment commander. And I... I just hope everything works out and we're going to bring the wall to the beach. Thank you. Thank you, Udo. Chief. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I'm here to ask for the selectman support of the Warren article to support the uh, repair of the Grisbold Dam. Um, we have had a group working on it very hard. We are still continuing to work very hard to try and get as much information out to the public. To explain to the public, we believe it's a much better uh, end result for the town of Hampton for a number of reasons. One is for a major flood control. The other is to uh, secure and keep secured the uh, Grisper building itself and to secure High Street as a uh, uh, potential flood problem. We're asking that the selectmen support us. We're more than happy to answer questions if you have them. Mr. Chairman, is Mr. Hurley aware that with other petitioners he needs to be at the budget meeting on Wednesday? I am. Well, I don't know what Mr. Hurley's aware of. Oh. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Appreciate it. Further public comment in seeing none, announcements and community calendars. Like um, actually, I uh, noted in our packet a letter of December, 20, December 31st, 2014 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Safety uh, directed to the manager, and I think it's good to share this with the public. It says, Dear Mr. Welch, the Seabrook Station first ever hostile action-based exercise series culminated on November 5th, 2014 with the first New Hampshire ARCA free FEMA evaluation in 30 years. This would not have been possible without the teamwork and dedication demonstrated by an extensive and diverse pool of emergency response personnel, which included staff from local emergency operations centers, police and fire departments, ham radio operators, etc. 
To you, the town of Hampton, thank you for the superb performance you delivered in all of the activities which made up this exercise cycle. Your accomplishment was integral, impressive, and invaluable to this outstanding achievement. We would like to particularly recognize uh, Chief James Sullivan, Deputy Chief Jamison Ayotte, Anthony Azarian, Cassandra Levitt, Michael McMahon, Darian Millett, Keith Noyes, Paul Paquette, Richard Sawyer, now Chief Sawyer, Kevin Schultz, and Peter Wall. The citizens of New Hampshire, and especially those of the town of Hampton, are well served by your committed cadre of public servants. Signed, Perry E. Plummer, Director. I think that was a very nice letter of recognition. That's it. So noted. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Not tonight. Thank you. Uh, I yield my time to uh, Matt Shaw, who just came in. I know he wanted to speak on one of the articles, but didn't make it in here quite in time. Oh, good. Oh. <laughs> you know, I called today, excuse me, Mr. Chairman and the rest of the board, I called today, it's going to be a little bit of a habit with me, I guess. I called today for uh, some information on whether I had to be here for these citizen water and articles, and I was told, well, I was told yes, but nobody told me what time, so it would have been helpful if, you know, <laughs> the meeting usually starts at 7, so I guess I'm a little late. So you need a I, new I social apologize. secretary. Pardon me? You need a new social secretary. Well, I thought the old <laughs> one would work good. <laughs> Somebody else's. I just wanted to talk about quickly about the uh, truck. cemetery truck. Um, need a truck. I know everybody here has mowed their lawn before, and uh, I don't think that anyone here uh, enjoys anything more than spending 20 to 30 hours a week mowing lawns, uh, raking leaves, and weed whacking weeds, and picking up all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, it's getting really hard. The workforce at the cemetery, the five members, the average age of the part-time help there is 69 years old. That's young. So, That's still yeah, frisky. Very young. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> be doing that all week. So. Um, it's kind of difficult for those guys to lift the things into the dump truck. Yeah. So we need a lower truck, but we figured we're going to get a truck that has a, a, might as well get one with a plow and the whole setup again. Good. It's going to be a pickup truck. Um, matter of fact, one of the guys used his pickup truck on several occasions down there to help out his own personal vehicle. So just want to, you know, get you a blessing. Uh, the money will come out of the trust fund, and uh, that's how we want to do it. It will be at no cost to anybody. Uh, in the town because all the money in the trust fund comes from the sale of the graves at the cemetery. So yeah. basically, Article. that's my spiel. And thank you, Rusty, for helping me out there. Article's nice right to see on all target, of you. Matt. It's good. Excuse me? Article's right on target this year. Right. Good. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. And good night. Good to see you, Matt. <laughs> Football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, nothing to do with local announcements, but I'd just like to offer my condolences to the citizens around the world that are facing yeah. the atrocities that are yeah. taking place from terrorists, both uh, in, in a variety of countries. And I, and I think, you know, the town of Hampton offers their condolences to all the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said, young man. Mr. Welch. Sir. Any community calendar announcements? No, sir. I'll have some announcements in my report. Thank you, sir. Roman 4, consent agenda. There are myriad veterans requalifications <laughs> with documentation. Number 2 is intent to cut. Gabrielli, 95 Drakeside Road, map slash lot 188-3. Number 3, limousine license permit, Seacoast Executive Transportation, LLC. And number 4, energy committee appointment. So Irina moved, Mr. Clinton. Chairman. Thank you. Wolsey? Second. Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Roman 5, approval of minutes. What date? My, my brain doesn't remember here. Wait a minute. You're not alone on the brain part. What day? Last week's minutes, the 5th? Uh, we're going to push that back until next week because yeah. I don't have it in my package. Right, I don't have it either. It. Uh, Roman 6, appointments. 1, Diana Martin, Director, Parks and Recreation. Departmental update. Director. Good evening again. Um, I'm sorry, Jim, I didn't introduce you as the Rec Advisory Council Selectman's Rep to give away those awards. I'm sorry. Okay. I was nervous. <laughs> Anyway, for uh, parks maintenance, 
Our staff is scheduled to start working again full time in late March, early April, but oh, but one of them has been in a couple times to do general cleanup of the building, shoveling out and building system. We were hoping to get the Christmas tree down from the gazebo and sand off the roof before now, but Bob, our parks foreman, has been out on, with an injury, so that is why there's a delay there. So the good news is that he's back, and he and I will be taking down the tree and Santa on Wednesday. Tomorrow I can hopefully schedule the time with the firefighters to get the snowflakes down as well. Sure. I'm finishing up the warrant articles for 2014. The lights are complete, but we still need to get some trees cut at Eaton Park. The urban tree has been sidelined with the weather. Um, and the final touches are being done to the Kids Kingdom sign. We will place the new sign in the park in the spring when the conditions of the ground are better. In the parking lots, we'll be starting the process in a few weeks of seeing who will be coming back this summer to work and finding out how many we need to hire for the season. And we'll probably do our training in the later part of May to officially start the season up. Recreation programs. We finished out the holiday season with the tour lights and the Magic Christmas Symphony, to, uh, Symphony trip to Portland. And we had the holiday light spectacular contest, which we just presented to the winners. We have set up a number of summer programs and camps that will be on this website soon and in our summer brochure. So far, they include <coughs> field summer day camp, surf lessons, archery lessons, challenges soccer camp, creative kids art camp, field hockey camp, granite state track and field, Lego robotics theater camp, Red Cross babysitting, basketball camp with Donnie Seals of the Wizards, warrior basketball camp, flag football camp, tennis lessons, and camp a lot of fun for grades 2, K through 2. We're in the process of scheduling the fields for use for the upcoming softball and baseball seasons, as well as lacrosse and tennis. We're in the process of seeing who is returning to our staff this summer, and we'll be sending out advertisements for staff in the next month. K-2 sports program is in its third of five sessions already. We're in the process of setting up our training for camp staff and lifeguards. We'll be having our Easter egg dig down at the beach again this year. That is scheduled for March 28th at 11 a.m. for children 12 and under. And we're looking for volunteers, as always, to help the Easter Bunny bury the eggs that morning. If anyone's interested, they should call our office. And it is a lot of fun, especially if it's a beautiful sunny morning like it was this year. It was awesome. Out. Fishing Derby this year will be on May 9th from 8 o'clock to 10 for grades K through 8. And the Derby is free, but children must come to the rec office to get a fishing license. We are looking for an instructor to run our fitness classes for our department again, so if there's anyone out there interested, please stop by our office. We're having, let's see, we've been taking registration for a couple of trips. Um, we have a trip going to Frozen, which is the Disney on Ice, Motown, the Musical, and Oxford Casino. Frozen is um, full, but we have, I think, six seats left for Motown. We have a trip going up to the Capitol Center for the Arts to see the very best of Celtic Thunder. This trip is set for April 8th and is $85 per person. The bus will leave the Old Town Hall parking lot at 6 p.m. for a 7.30 show. The local league, which is our high school rec basketball league, will be starting up this weekend. We have set a trip to the Ireland for September 9th through the 16th. The trip highlights include... Dublin, Kildare, Rock of Cashel, Limerick, Cliffs of Moore, Galway, Rathbond Farm, Ring of Kerry, Killarney, Blarney, Waterford, and Glendower, and Avoca. We will be providing this trip in partnership with the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. And we just today scheduled the travel show to learn about the trip for April 7th at 6 p.m. here in the Selectman's Room. So we'll be looking for that info in the newspaper soon. The classes that we have running right now are art class with Mrs. A. We have three yoga classes going on, men's basketball league and a pickleball on Monday nights. And I am here a little bit earlier than I usually am in this rotation. So um, there are a few things that usually would be set up by this time that are, we are in the process of right now, which will include our theater trips. We're going to the North Shore Music Hall and the Agunquik Playhouse again this year. So, having said that, we uh, most of the shows we'll, that we will be offered, we're just waiting to hear back the dates of the actual shows. But the shows that we'll be offering are Sister Act, Saturday Night Fever, Dream Girls, and Shrek. And in a Gunquit Playhouse, we're working on Ragtime and Nice Work. And they still have one more show that they're offering, and they're calling it a surprise Broadway musical because they don't even know what it is yet. So, there'll be three shows there, too. 
We set up a trip to the Red Sox at Yankee Stadium on Saturday, April 11th. The tickets are $129 for outfield and $149 for infield, depending on the seats for the strip. And this includes tailgating, food, bus, and admission to the game, so it's a really great deal. We also ordered Red Sox tickets for Fenway. That game is against the Houston Astros on July 3rd. I don't think we've ever seen a game with the Astros here. The cost of the trip is $60 per person and includes your game ticket and transportation to and from the game. We set up a luncheon for the seniors at Camillo's Floating Restaurant in Portland for July 29th. Fee is $30 includes a bus ride and your luncheon. We have a date for the Strawberry Festival that we do with the seniors in partnership with the fire department. And this year we're hopefully moving the festival back to the Victoria Inn. That's going to be on July 14th. We're in the process of making some decisions for the 5K, uh, the I'm trying 5K road race for a date in June. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it this year, but we're trying to get <coughs> some more info to come on that. And lifeguards will be sending out advertisements for lifeguards for the summer in the next few weeks. That is all except for my little scoreboard. Thank you, and we'll come back to your scoreboard. Questions on the update? Selectman Wilson. She did all that in one breath, too. <laughs> I know, I'm totally winded right now. <laughs> and I have absolutely no idea how you keep track of it all. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys always do a lot of excellent programs. Has there ever been any thought of doing a, uh, a winter ice skating thing at Bachelor's Pond? I would so. You know, what I really wanted to do was an ice skating rink under the lights at Eaton Park to show off the new lights. Ah. I can't quite figure out how to get that done. But, yeah, in Bachelor Pond, the last, I would say, I don't know, we'd have to ask the school permission, but um, I saw some kids out there the other day. They, they've been skating there, and they've also cleaned off some ice down to uh, Taylor, Taylor River. Taylor River, I saw that, too. Uh, so they have a couple of nice places. And it'd be kind of, maybe if we scheduled just a, a, a community uh, yeah. day down there just to go skating and... I used to do, we used to do that down at the landfill, down at yeah. the landfill, down at the park at Hard Art Way where right. they had the um, retention pond. Right. But the ice would never, it would melt on one end and the other, it just became yeah. a nightmare. Well, have, we have good ice this year and it might I know, be something finally. you can do every year, but it's something that we might want to yeah. just think about either. It's worth or doing something. School vacation or something like I that. Agree. I agree. I agree. That's an easy commute there too. <laughs> I agree with Rusty, I did, but I think the, under the lights would be super. I so know. If you never do that, that would be There a, are lights at Patchelor's Field. Okay. Oh, there are be beautiful. lights there. Yeah. They can still skate at night. Yeah. So. Plus, phenomenal job on your report, on your department. You guys do a great job. I'm always Thank impressed uh, for the size of the town and the size of the department. Thank super. You. Even though you didn't introduce me. <laughs> still, still give you a good report. I was told I had to be quick tonight, and I just <laughs> forgot all about it. I'm really sorry. Great job, Director, and I'll introduce your acceptance of donation to Parks and Recreation Department, GameCraft Indoor Table and Scoreboard value of $499.99. Yes, I, um, I just attended a conference up in North Conway, and New Northern New England Recreation Parks Conference, and I won a scoreboard. It's a, it's a tabletop scoreboard. It's about this big. It's up in my office, but we, we have 100 uses for it, and we've been kind of talking about getting one, but they're 500 bucks, so that wasn't something that was on the top of our list. We have a lot of other needs, so I was lucky enough to win it, so i just like to get approval to accept it now. Mr. Chairman, I will so move that we allow the Recreation <laughs> Director to accept the donation of the scoreboard. Second. Most we'll vital. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank All you, right. Director. Thank you. Good night, Diana. Tough night. <laughs> Roman six appointments. Number two, Chief Sawyer Police Department. Departmental update in the penguin plunge traffic pattern. He's accompanied by Deputy Chief Hobbs. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Mr. Chair, if you would mind, I'd go to right to the uh, penguin plunge issue. Um, nothing has changed. Uh, from the current traffic pattern we've uh, utilized the last three years. We'll be diverting the northbound traffic uh, on Saturday, the 31st of January, and on Sunday, February 1st, from 9 in the morning to approximately 2 to 3 in the afternoon, depending on the, what time we get the crowd out of there. So the northbound traffic on Ocean Boulevard will be diverted down H Street, and Ashworth Ave will become two ways, uh, north and south, all the way behind the Ashworth, uh, pardon me, uh, behind the casino complex and up D Street and back resuming normal northbound traffic on Ocean Boulevard. 
and the southbound traffic south of H Street will remain that on Ashworth Avenue. Um, this event is in its uh, 16th year. Uh, raised quite a bit of money for uh, athletes for Special Olympics. Uh, folks apologize they couldn't make it here tonight, and we're right up against it in the schedule. Uh, but we begin that week uh, setting up uh, down at the police station. We utilize that like we do for other events as the uh, the money room for all the donations that we receive just to maintain security levels, and it's a whole weekend event. Uh, we are looking for permission from the selectmen to reroute the traffic in our normal pattern for that event. Thank you, sir. Questions, Selectman Wilson? No questions. I'd be happy to move the. Uh... Let me just work it around the board real okay. quick, please. Sir? No. I'm in support. Hope you're playing much better weather than we've had this past year. <laughs> um, we were talking about that if we had that bit of cold weather, there are no provisions for cold weather that cancel. <laughs> so if you, if you sign up, we, we want you to go in. So. You? I'm on board. Okay, great. Woolsey, seconded by? I'll uh, second it. Uh, Waddell, all those in favor? Unanimous. Sir. Um, I'm going to start out and highlight, um, it's going to be a more of a year in review, uh, and I'm going to highlight the uh, personnel issues simply because we are in one of those transitional stages in the department where we've experienced a lot of folks leaving, coming, and going. Um, so I'm just going to go over that in uh, chronological order. In March, uh, Officer Nate Basque resigned from the department to accept a position as an officer with the Amesbury, Massachusetts Police Department. I know he thought about it long and hard, but Amesbury was his hometown, so he did uh, make the move down to Massachusetts. <clears throat> In March, uh, Detective Alex Reno was promoted to the rank of sergeant and assigned as a department prosecutor, replacing Sergeant Newcomb, who had announced his retirement. In March, uh, part-time officer Chris Kaiser, who lives here in Hampton, uh, was hired as a full-time officer. He attended the 165th New Hampshire Police Academy, graduating in December, and is back out working in the department. In May, Sergeant Newcomb did retire after 18 years of service with the department. Uh, we are pleased to report that Barry chose to stay with the department and join the part-time ranks. In May, part-time officer Coy DeMarco was hired as a full-time officer, and Officer DeMarco, also who resides in town, attended the 165th New Hampshire Police Academy, graduating in December, is back out on the road. In May, uh, SRO Detective Doug Ruth was assigned as a full-time CID detective, and Officer James DeLuca was selected to take over as SRO detective at the Winnicott High School. For the summer season, uh, we went to a two-corporal system to uh, help with the supervision issues that we were experiencing, and we had uh, Officer Robert Kenyon and Officer Jason Jackson assigned as the summer corporals, and they did an outstanding job for us this summer. And also during the summer months, Officer Matt Robinson was assigned as assistant prosecutor for the... Uh, the increase we experienced in that office. As you know, uh, Chief Sullivan retired after 30 years of service on October 31st, and I assumed command of the department on the 1st and swore, swore in as the chief on the 3rd. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, on November 10th, Sergeant Hobbs was promoted to deputy chief. Uh, David has served with the department since 1990 in a, in a, a multitude of facets. In November, uh, to replace the openings that were created, uh, Part-time officer Shannon Feely was hired as a full-time officer, and she is currently uh, attending her first, uh, was a week ago today, she started the police academy, the 166 New Hampshire Police Academy, but uh, we require our officers that are attending the academy to check in with us every Friday, just keep us updated on their, on their test scores and their PT stuff. And uh, I won't say that she's having a great time, but she's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Part-time, uh, which is really uh, an area of concern for us. We had a very busy year. Uh, we did hire 14 new part-time officers, and that brought us up to approximately 40 officers to start the season with. But we also uh, experienced a number of resignations. We had over 21 part-time officers resign their positions with the department in 2014. Now, three of those officers, uh, Kaiser, DeMarco, and Feely, we gained... Uh, as full-time officers with the department, which is a, that's a good thing, although it is a negative against our part-time ranks. Uh, also, would like to highlight uh, Officer Jack Donaldson left the department after over 50 years of service that uh, is unprecedented uh, as a special <laughs> officer. Uh, he actually received recognition um, about a month after he, uh, he retired, and they recognized him up at the police academy, one of the part-time graduations. So it was nice to go up there and attend that. Uh, that, was, that was a nice... Uh, Nice ceremony for him. We currently have 30 part-time officers on the roster as we sit here today, although that number is going to reduce to 28, I would expect, in the near future. We, we received notice of two of our part-time officers, 
having background checks being conducted on and by other agencies in state, uh, which is a frequent thing we experience. So it's just one of those things with the part-timers as we gear up. Uh, we start the part-time academy at Hampton PD in about two weeks, and that is that regular class of folks. We have eight in the uh, right currently as uh, candidates for that uh, for that, those positions. We have to uh, be reasonable to assume that we're going to lose a few people before now and the start of the summer. That just that's what history teaches us. We lose a number of people when we put out the shift pick letter coming up uh, in a couple of months. That's when you start getting resignations from folks that just can't make the commitment uh, or have other things going on in their life that just prevent them from being able to come in the uh, workforce during the summer months. So uh, I expect we're going to have a lean summer as far as the working crew. It's going to probably, all things being the way that they've worked, I, I wouldn't doubt that we get down to 30 or even under 30 specials somewhere during the summer, summer months as we progress. It's just uh, the history of our attrition. So I can move on to activity, or do we have any questions on what I've present, presented so far let's, on personnel? Uh, let's uh, questions on personnel. No. no. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sure. Activity. Um, you have two sheets in front of you. The, the small one is the activity that you'll find uh, that we do on state properties within the town of Hampton. Yep. Um, and I'll entertain any questions on that after I finish the presentation so we can lose that. Uh, the other sheet you have is uh, two four, uh, 2014, and also if you go back a couple of pages, it's a historical, going back a number of years, so kind of give it, put it in perspective for you. So this report is based on the same period last year, January 1 to December 31st. Calls for service were down 0.5%. Uh, uh, we remained about the same number of calls for service. Our arrests were down 3%. DWI arrests were up 14%. <clears throat> Drug offenses are down 15%. Incidents reported were up 2.3%. Offenses as a whole were down 1.4%. Felonies were down 13%. Accidents are down 7%. Our motor vehicle stops were down 18%. Parking tickets are down 12%. The overall uh, reporting basis, when we report our statistics, uh, to the FBI to print the National Crime Report. It's the NIBRS, National Based Incident Reporting System. Our overall Group A crimes against persons were up 7%. Group A crimes against property were down 3%. Group A crimes against society, down 11%. And Group B, the minor crimes, were down 5%. And yeah, the biggest challenge we're, again, addressing is those issues with personnel. I, I attribute some of those issues being down to the lack of personnel out on the road. Many of the, the items we're talking about, particularly motor vehicles, that's proactive policing. That's having officers out on the street that are able to make those stops. Um, so we are down in that area, and we've, we've proven over time that if we have officers out there making stops, we come up with those other things that lead to more serious issues, including the felony arrests and the drug issues. The only uh, issues we're having, um, I met with a manager last week. Uh, the deputy and I had the opportunity to go out and meet in Brentwood with a group of area chiefs. Uh, if you were unaware, Rockingham County has been recently designated a high-intensity drug trafficking area by the U.S. Justice Department. Most of that is due to the issues we're facing with the heroin epidemic that's plaguing the region. Uh, we did experience four heroin overdose deaths in Hampton in 2014, okay? We initiated close to 30 investigations just on heroin alone in 2014. Many of those investigations are ongoing. The HIDER uh, designation opens up certain funds specifically for drug trafficking issues. This is, this is not a feel-good program. This is not an education program or rehabilitation program. This is to go after the people that are bringing this poison into our communities. Uh, we've, we've been uh, exploring what our participation in that group is going to be. Um, it's one of those things I spoke to the manager, I spoke to the chairman, that we, are, uh, we know it's something we have to do. It's just to what level we're going to do it, but we are going to participate with the HIDA group. We are fortunate enough that um, the deputy director for New England HIDA is actually a resident of Hampton. It's retired Major Dave Kelly from the state police. Some of you may know him. Yeah. Uh, and he's been uh, more than willing to help us out or uh, give you any information you might need concerning that program. But it's something that I fully endorse and intend to pursue. 
and I'll entertain any questions. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. <clears throat> I don't have questions, but I am, I am so concerned about the lack of both full-time officers and the part-time officers. I can remember, and I'm dating myself now, but Rusty will probably remember. Uh, I can remember in the 60s when you could stand on Ocean Boulevard and look down and you'd see a green uniform at the end of every lettered street. And I, I, I don't know. My estimate, and I'm not running the department, is that you need at least six more full-time officers, at least. And you certainly need more part-time officers. Uh, I know the retirement funding for the state is killing us on full-time positions, but we've got to find a way to resolve for you the needs of the department for the special officers. So we'll, we'll have to try to pull together and do the best we can on that. But it's, it's a very, I think it's a very dangerous situation, in addition to which it's depriving you of the ability to maintain uh, a, pers a police presence uptown, and I know you do your best, and I see the units, but especially in the summer, uh, because you have to be so focused on the beach and what's happening. So I, uh, I feel for you, we need more for you, <coughs> and I'm really concerned about where you're going with staffing. Thank you. Thank you. I think you do a superlative job both in town and at the beach. Thank you. I just got a question on the uh, the parking tickets. I know we were down some this year. Uh, we used to have parking enforcement. Enforcement. Yeah. And I don't think we have that much anymore. That we as we used to. We used to have some people that were hired just to do parking. Exactly. When we um, when the budget defaulted in 2014. That was a program we had brought back in 2013, uh, I think it was 12 and 13. We had uh, four folks that came in, rode bicycles, um, and issued the parking tickets in the municipal lots and on the side streets, particularly up in those, the North Shore area, was uh, a hotbed for parking issues. Yes. Uh, and it was a good program, and I, and I think that's part of it also, that we, because of the default, we started looking at things to cut that we didn't have to bring on. I would love to deal we bring that back on because I think you would see a corresponding increase in the number of tickets issued mm. and the revenues generated. Not that I ever want to be in the revenue business, but it's one goes with the other. Well, it's, it's one of the problems that we have on North Beach and, and yes. some of the other areas where we have this. And if if we if we keep going with default budgets and stuff like this, this is some of the stuff that falls by the wayside. Yeah. I'd love to tell you the officers we're going to pick up the slack, but as we can see, um, we're already short on the number of officers we have, so those things are a lower priority than addressing the other the other issues that we're dealing with. So that's what suffers is the number of tickets issued, and we do get we do get the complaints on on the parking issues, um, and we address them as we can. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, a couple of questions, Chief. Yep. You, you said DWIs are up. Yeah, I know. I was looking at the stats, and uh, I actually had the opportunity to attend the governor's uh, breakfast on drunk uh, drunk driving and impaired driving uh, about a month ago. And yeah, the trend was seen in the state. And uh, the lieutenant from the state police had presented it. Just it's one of those things you can almost chart based on economics. Uh, but we are seeing more increased issues with alcohol, even though a lot of the other other issues are down. The alcohol uh, based arrests are up. Wow. And the other thing that I have a, a big concern with is the drugs, the heroin. I mean, yeah. I, and I, I know you guys are doing a good job. I know the state's doing a good job, and I know it's really something that's being, you know, looked at. Is, is that mostly people coming into Hampton or Hampton residents or? No, it, it's the whenever you have an issue with drugs like heroin, um, there's a hub generally where these things come out of. Yeah. The, you know, the, you'll sit down, the DEA will plot out where most of the heroin's coming all the way, coming up from New York City all the way up through to northern New England. It's, it's not just a city problem. It's not just a beach problem. It, it's, it's everywhere. Um, towns all over us, everywhere, are, are experiencing the same thing we are. Um, so it's not just, you got to look at it this way, it's so cheap, and that's the problem, is heroin is so cheap and so much more potent than it was 10 years ago that people will travel to get it and bring it back. So we, we have Wonderful. reports and issues where Hampton residents have gone to some of these hub areas where it's being distributed and attempted to make purchases. They were intercepted. Some of them have been arrested, um, led to other investigations. So it's not just people coming from out of town and dropping it off. It's some of the residents of town of Hampton are, are traveling to pick it up. 
Um, so it, it is a low, it, it's a regional problem, but it's a local problem in the same breath. And I'm sure we're doing a, a really good job with the schools and stuff, trying to educate and keep it out of the schools. And the schools in this town do an outstanding job trying to educate the kids on this, or when, when information comes to light, it very quickly gets to what our SROs, which is why that program is so worthwhile, is, is the number of things we head off at the early stages. The earlier we find it, the less likely it's to get more serious. Mm -hmm. um, you just see all the time now that, you know, people are getting hurt over drugs. Yeah. They're either overdosing or, you know, you can attribute a lot of the crime that we experience, the burglaries, the thefts from cars, to folks that are desperate because of their addiction committing these crimes to get money or other, other funding for, for their habit. And it's, it's all connected. Yeah, good job. I mean, we've got to really stay on top of that. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, Chief. Good Thank night. you. Great job, gentlemen. Great job. Roman 6, number 3, Christy Pulliam, Finance Director, Alpha Budget, Bravo Year End. Director. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm going to be the fastest <laughs> for you guys. Good evening, Christy. Okay. I just have two quick things for you. I just wanted to provide the... Um, Board with an update on the budget. Um, the Warren article before you tonight does reflect the changes that were made at the level of the budget committee last Thursday night. Uh, the budget amount being put forward is $26,379,040, which is about $1.1 million less than the Board of Selectmen budget that was put forward, and, the def and about $128,000 less than the default budget, which will be is on the warrant also. Um, as you guys, everyone knows, the Budget Committee public hearing will be held this Wednesday night, if anyone from the public wishes to attend. And I will continue to make any necessary changes as the process continues and provide um, the board with updated copies of the budget as soon as all of the changes have been made. So that was my budget update. I don't know if anyone has any questions on that or... If we want to go right on to questions on the hearing. budget budget process in general, select I, I just have one quick question, Christy. Yeah. I was looking at my my some <coughs> of my budget paperwork, and uh, I saw the Conservation Commission land acquisition fund. It looks like it was showing at year end close thirty two thousand seven fifty five. Would I would have to get that uh, that account is held by the treasurer. Right, Ellen. okay. So I would have to talk to Ellen oh, okay. to see. Um, I know they have several different funds over there in the conservation fund. It's yes. broken into several That's, different funds. Yes. Um, so. Actually, she was in my office the other day, and we were talking about that, and she rattled all the figures off. She knew uh, exactly what was in each of them, but I 46, 11. can't yeah. repeat them. So We could just have that for the Wednesday land night, fund? Yeah. the land acquisition, just the current um, total that they have uh, mm -hmm for the article. Other than that, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. No, thank you. Sir. All set. Thank you. Second one down. Uh, Director, I would just like to uh, thank you for your tremendous, tremendous uh, professionalism in supporting both the Budget Committee, Department Heads, uh, this board, the Town Manager. Uh, during this budget process in, in addition to all of your other functions. So um, it's your first cycle, and you did a remarkable <laughs> so job. You, you did a remarkable job, and the data was there. It was accurate, and uh, you really were a godsend, and we appreciate the, the uh, filling in and, of Mike Swolcher's large shoes, and you've done a tremendous job. Uh, uh, in the budget process in general, um, the department heads, I, I commend them for preparation of their budgets and bringing forth their needs. And, and that process that they brought to the town manager. And then, of course, the Board of Selectmen, we have our budget that we have voted on. We naturally support our budget. Uh, and I respect the work that the uh, Budget Committee has, has done this year in their due diligence. And although there's a, there's a disagreement in the, the bottom line between the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, uh, that's the way this town is structured. And I, I do uh, appreciate their efforts. And Mr. Welch is, is going to just discuss for the public's knowledge, the concept of the default, what that really means. We've heard some public comment tonight. Uh, what that threshold is going forward, how that contrasts to the uh, uh, last year's budget, the board's budget, and what the process is going forward. Sir. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, Thursday night the Budget Committee voted to adopt their budget to take to the um, public hearing, which is scheduled for next Wednesday. 
uh, 7 o'clock, it's going to be at the cafeteria at the middle school. So uh, people should attend if they wish to have input. Uh, saying that, uh, what the Budget Committee did was they adopted the default budget, which was put forward by the Board of Selectmen, which contains uh, the appropriations from last year, plus all legal obligations encumbered on the town for this coming year that were approved last year and are carried forward by statute. Uh, and they then subtracted, I believe it was $128,000 from the default budget, which now makes it less than um, the default budget they adopted, which now makes it actually less than the default budget. So if you look at Article 12, which is in your new handout tonight, um, the budget for the town, as proposed by the Budget Committee, is $26,379,040. And the budget for the budget committee, uh, the default budget is 26,507,097, which is in round figures $128,000 more than the actual budget established by the budget committee. That's a million dollars in round figures, a million dollars difference over what was proposed by the Board of Selectmen. Um, I was asked today uh, what that represented. And I said, quite frankly, I haven't had the opportunity to go through the, uh, the small book. Of, of appropriations to uh, compare line to line to line to line to line versus the default budget to see exactly where those cuts are. But they're going to be widespread through the entire budget. Uh, to give you, I think, an idea, uh, the Budget Committee specifically cut the $25,000 in uh, sidewalks to $5,000. If that should default, then there's basically no money to do any sidewalk work at all. Um, the question was, uh, and it's a good question, uh, the money was not spent last year. It wasn't spent the year before. It wasn't spent simply because uh, the budget had been cut in previous years, and that's something that we have to look at with the default budget. The budget had been cut in previous years, and we spent all of our snow removal budget money in January, February, and March of last year. We still had October, November, and December. So there were certain sums in the public works budget that are earmarked that we prevented from being spent. Sidewalks is one of them. Um, and there are a number of other issues in there uh, that deal with uh, fuel, for instance. Uh, that was cut by 25% of the fuel accounts. Uh, the fact is we're $11,000 over in the 2013, 2014 fuel accounts. Um, and we are buying at substantially less than the pump phase because we're buying through the state contract. To give you an idea, in November, uh, we paid 225 a gallon. The price of the pump was about 245 a gallon. So that's, and then we don't pay taxes either. Uh, so there's quite a bit of difference there. So uh, in a nutshell, that's kind of what the process is. Uh, the budget committee has established the, their budget for the year. We have it. It's in the warrant article. And the default budget is at, follows after it if the regular budget is not adopted. Thank you. <clears throat> Selectman Wadella, uh, I, know, I know I share for the board uh, our thanks for you, for oh. your liaison and membership in, in working with that committee uh, this you. year. Well done, sir. Uh, without any further questions on budget, uh, bravo, year end, ma'am. Uh, 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 sorry, yes, ma'am. Just one quick thing. Yes, ma'am. Or two quick things. The, um, after the public hearing, on Wednesday night at the Academy, the Budget Committee has an opportunity to revisit yes. their figure that they are presenting to the public hearing. Right. As long as someone from the audience has brought up that particular topic, whatever area of the budget it might be. So there is still the potential for the public to make comments uh, on the uh, budget figure as proposed and perhaps uh, e explain to the Budget Committee why some adjustments might need to be made. So that is, uh, that is the reason for the public hearing and people who are concerned about various aspects of the bu budget need to show up and express themselves uh, so that the Budget Committee has some feedback. Yeah, also, regarding um, the earlier comments on multiple year contracts, only the relevant year, except for collective bargaining, which is a separate issue, uh, only the relevant year, in other words, 2015 year, is addressed to raise and appropriate this year. There are no raise and appropriate figures 
for subsequent years for any contracts, any employment contracts, other than collective bargaining, which is a separate entity. Yeah. So I just wanted to clarify that for the public. We will not be trying to appropriate in 2015 into subsequent years. Correct. That's not happening. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Question, question. On, on the, the, this will be our third, if, if this goes through, this will be our third year? I think that's correct. As, as for default budgets? So. Yes. Now, uh, the fire stations came in last year? They came on to the, yes, the, onto last the debt year. service last year, yes. Right, and so fuel. Along with Church Street Pump, pump Station, I right. believe. So heat, came on so what I'm looking at is heating, heating oil and or gas for that building. It has mm -hmm. been significantly increased yes. over the past two years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that, that's that's all part with, that was in our budget, yeah. and within without the default budget, we're still trying to. And that building yes. we we know has cost us a lot more to heat mm -hmm. this year than it has mm -hmm. two or three years ago. So th that's you know some of the stuff we have to really look at when when we go to vote a default budget in again, mm -hmm. is we're working on money that's two or three years old, yeah. and 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 budgets that were two or three years old, and trying to, to get to that. So. Just and back one, to you, Selectman Wilson. One quick correction. If the operating budget proposed <clears throat> is lower than the default budget figure, you will not have a default budget. You will have a lesser figure, but it will be an actual operating budget. Right. Yes, ma'am. Any last rounds or alibis on I'll budget? Be quiet. Okay. Director, year end, year end. please. Okay. Um, as I reported last month, I believe all of prior year purchase orders have been completed, expended, or turned over, they're done, they're gone, off the books. So we are only referring to 2014 uh, purchase orders on the list that I provided you with this afternoon, along with any of the non-lasting um, warrant articles. Okay. So we have 300000 uh, $300, dollars $300, worth of open purchase orders. 100000 of that is from the EMS fund, so it's not from the general fund. So we're looking at 200, a little over $200,000 in um, open purchase orders for 2014 to be encumbered into 15. Um, we're looking at prior year warrant articles. We only have one going back into 13, and that's for the uh, wastewater facility study at 90000 and then we have one, two, three, four purchase or, or three, four warrant articles from 2014. These are all non-lapsing, so okay. we can carry them forward. Um, one is for the Gristmill Dam for 400,000. The other is for High Street <coughs> Covert for 235,000. Right. Yep. The recreation infrastructure. There's 530 sitting, 530 dollars sitting out open still, but right. there's also been an encumbrance of 5,460 because. They've already ordered a sign and um, some tree cutting, so there's a per open purchase orders for those. Good. Obviously, the tree cutting hasn't taken place due to the weather and not being able to bring the trucks onto the fields because they'll um, damage them. And we have for the gristmill uh, restoration, which was warrant article number 23 from 2014, has $28,678 on it. So it's a total of 700 and $54,208 in uh, war non-lapsing warrant articles going forward. So it comes out to $1.78 uh, million dollars for just from the general fund between the um, mm -hmm. warrant articles and the open purchase orders for 2014. I have also provided you guys a list of all of the purchase orders um, so that you can see every single one of them that's open at the time. And kind of giving you a highlight in, on the uh, front page there of some of the larger um, ticket purchase orders. Uh, I can read that list if you want or go through some of the bigger ones for you, whatever you guys prefer. There's nothing gigantic on any of, um, <coughs> I mean, we're not looking at like 50000 60000 $100,000 purchase orders. They're smaller amounts, the majority of them, so. And that's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, are we going to address the uh, few purchase orders, like the um, traffic light? It's all in the there. They're in there. Wearing light. That's okay. included in the order that you I must have missed it. Tonight. Okay. All right. So this would be the um, maximum figure that we would be encumbering into 15. Yeah. Um, I think we've done a fairly good job in our department in c contacting department heads and good. 
closing out anything that mm -hmm. you know isn't going to be spent or they've already spent and the purchase order wasn't yeah. applied for some reason. So we've done a fairly good job of cleaning them up, I think. Yeah. So I think this is a pretty yeah. um, good list. Encumbrances have been a thorn in my side for years, so it's nice to see them really pulled in tight. Thank you. Uh, any further comment, questions? Sure. Okay. Sir? 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 Director, oh, thank you. Yes, I have. <clears throat> thank you. I wasn't going to ask this probably, but <laughs> 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 don't tell them. Thank you again, Director. Yeah. Have a good night. You too. You too. Romans 6, number 4. <clears throat> John Neon Experience Hampton Alpha Downtown Improvement Project Support Letter. Sir, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, hopefully, because uh, I all know that you would love to uh, come in on Fridays, pick up your folder uh, to read over the weekend. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll, you had a chance to read our 11-page uh, proposal. Um, a little bit of background. Uh, Experience Hampton, not only on this board, but throughout the uh, town of Hampton, has been really known for its social events. Uh, the Christmas parade being the largest. Uh, last year we also had the uh, tea concert on the greens uh, at the Tuck Museum. We, we uh, do the uh, flags uh, during the parade and just a number of other things that uh, we do as an organization, the banners that you will see on telephone poles. However, uh, the Board of uh, Directors this year, 2014 I should say, um, decided that we wanted to do more for the community. Uh, then, although we still wanted to do the parade and, and other social events, uh, we wanted to be a participant in helping grow Hampton. Uh, and um, <clears throat> it kind of came from the town allowing us to be representative uh, on a, a committee that the town had established with the planning department. Uh, with uh, Jack Mitty and his and associates to do a study of downtown area. Um, John Tinius uh, was our uh, representative on that committee, and um, through that involvement, along with um, John's own vision um, of moving uh, forward, uh, we came up with what we call our 2020 vision. 2020 vision, very simply, is that Experience Hampton um, is moving towards trying to raise $200,000 over the next five years. Uh, those dollars then would be put back into the community <clears throat> on small uh, initiatives to uh, work on improvement programs, uh, especially in the downtown Hampton area to start with. Knowing that, we uh, decided that we had to go out and look for different funding. Uh, we knew very quickly that we weren't coming to the town of Hampton to ask, um, but there were other funding sources that we decided to at least explore. The proposal that you have in front of you tonight is the uh, uh, proposal that we are submitting into Kenny Buck Savings. We have met with them on a couple of occasions over the last month. They do have some funds in their community uh, funding program, if you will. And they have uh, opened the door for us to look at applying for some funds um, for our 2020. Uh, we uh, decided that rather than asking uh, Kenny Monk for a one-year grant, um, we are pushing them to a five-year grant um, at $10,000 a year, totaling $50,000 over the next five years. Uh, that would be 25% uh, of our goal of uh, 200000 one of the things that we wanted to look at is that, okay, how do we, how do we incorporate some of the recommendations that were um, supported by this uh, town and by the Board of Selectmen at the time in terms of some of the improvements that we would like to make downtown? And, and one of the, the biggest ones was pedestrian friendliness. How do we, how do we make downtown uh, a, a friendlier place for pedestrians? Um, and as we were looking at what could be our first project, uh, it was evident by the board that uh, there is an alleyway uh, that goes from the town parking lot to Lafayette Road um, that is, uh, runs along uh, to an, a, an adult uh, daycare uh, and down to Greg's Bistro. 
Now, if any of you have been down there at, uh, during the day <coughs> or even at nighttime, you would see uh, an alley, not a walkway, <coughs> but just an old, dingy alley. And then if you're there at nighttime, you would not want to walk down that alley because there is no lighting. So the board of directors made the decision that we wanted to go um, and look at this as our first project. Um, and that project would consist of a new walkway, um, some lighting fixtures so that we could provide lights at night, and then some green greenery. We also talked with Kenny Bunk with regard to future projects uh, going beyond 2015. You know, we, we, um, we don't know how much money we're going to be able to raise, uh, but we, we know as an organization that we have to have a starting point. Um, through the uh, memory of Kay Tinius, the 2020 fund started, and presently have $5,000 in that fund. We're hoping with the, uh, uh, if we're successful with Kenny Bunk, we'll be able to add to that budget. And soon, um, within the next couple of weeks, we'll be going to other funding sources for additional money. Uh, not large amounts, but small amounts, but all those small amounts will add into a large, what I would hope, to a hundred to $200,000 grant process. So, coming here today, Experience Hampton is very sensitive that although that we are just a, an organization of volunteers, uh, we wanted to make sure that anything that we suggest, propose, or do, that we get the support from the town and, and from this uh, Board of Selectmen. It's important for us to know that we can work together in partnership, uh, not only with the board, but departments, uh, including Mr. Welch and his departments of building and planning, et cetera, et cetera because our intention is to work together as a partnership. Uh, we realize that funds are tight uh, everywhere, and if there's anything that we can do to help in that effort, uh, we want to do it. Uh, the proposal that you see uh, not only outlines um, Experience Hampton, John Tinius's 2020 vision himself, um, our first year uh, plan, uh, our four years after that plan in terms of just ideas, um, but uh, most importantly, looking for somewhat of a sense of support from this board, uh, indicating that we're heading in the right direction. And that um, although, you know, we still have a ways to go with um, defining some of the projects that we'd like to work on, including the first year one, in terms of cost and uh, detail, uh, conceptual and detail design, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're, uh, we're here tonight to ask uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, for a general letter of support. Uh, we will be submitting in this application uh, to Kenny Bunk Savings. Uh, it is not a requirement, uh, but rather a, um, uh, something that I would like to add uh, to um, the application. And so I'm here tonight to request from the Board of Selectmen a general letter of support um, that would give us uh, the opportunity to attach it to our application. Thank you, sir. Selectman Griffin. Um, I applaud you for uh, all the work that's gone into this. I think it's a great situation, and I think it's only going to get better in the future. So I'm fully in su support of <clears throat> Rusty. It's, it's a great program. It's a great start. But it is that. It is a start. Um, it, it, it's trying to make our town look better, feel better, and be a better place. So I'm in support of it. Select more down. Yeah, I think I think everybody would agree, and especially the business owners down there in town, that anything that makes it more pedestrian friendly is going to enhance the, the look of the town and also the, the business opportunities down there. I think that plan that John Tinius has for that alleyway is absolutely beautiful because it, it, when you do walk through it now, you're just walking through an alleyway, but if you made it into something that was really nice so that people coming from the municipal lot to town would just enhance the whole, the whole experience. So I'm totally in support. I think you guys are doing a great job, and uh, keep it up. I'll make the motion for the letter of support. Second by Mr. Bridal. Mr. Woolsey is indisposed with a dry throat. Um, and Okay. Yep. Take your time, and uh, we'll we'll assume your support. 
And uh, that is a unanimous uh, vote of consensus of approval for your project. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're very welcome. I'm Roman 7, Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, uh, in addition to my normal report, I had a, uh, a call this afternoon from the Department of Environmental Services, and uh, I believe we're all familiar <coughs> and have all read the continuing saga of the, uh, the guest, which is a, uh, a boat that is run ashore uh, down the end of, uh, uh, down next to the marina. Um, they are now in... Uh, ownership of the state is an ownership of that particular vessel. Oh, yummy. The uh, parties that, that originally owned it have not claimed <coughs> it. They have defaulted. Um, the state called today because they are preparing to remove the vessel, uh, and I believe they're preparing to remove it by breaking it up, loading it in the dumpsters, and hauling it away. Ugh. And in doing that, they have requested uh, the assistance of our highway department to assist them and the, uh, the port authority. Uh, and the harbor master in accomplishing that end. I told them I would bring that request to the board tonight so that they could have an answer and try to plan on what they, 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 they would like to do. So I think it's a good aim, it's a good goal. Uh, getting rid of that will uh, certainly move a substantial ice to the community. And it won't end up in somebody's bedroom uh, when we have a next, our next heavy storm. Um, in addition to that, I just want folks to know that uh, the, uh, they need to be aware that the, the warrant for the annual town meeting closes tomorrow. That's January 13th, 2015 at 5 p.m. They uh, need to present their petitioned articles uh, to the selectman's office in the town hall by that date and time. Uh, the public hearing on the budget and warrant articles will be held in the Hampton Middle School at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, January 14th, 2015. The Hampton Academy. Hampton Academy, excuse me. Well, the middle school, the academy is. They, no, we, no, we no, keep on, the, middle, the middle one is Marston. Yeah, well, they, so they, they keep on referring back and forth to various things. <coughs> it is the Hampton academy Hampton. building. Hampton Academy Middle yeah. School. You're okay. junior high to me, but. Uh, it's like I said, everybody has a name. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you graduated from there, Rusty, <laughs> it's the academy. <laughs> um, I do. So please, if you're interested in the budget or you're interested in warrant articles, please attend, speak on them, tell the budget committee your feelings so that they'll know what's going on in your mind. Uh, the deliberative session of town meeting is going to be held at 8.30 a.m. Uh, that'll be at Winnicott High School. Uh, it will run until it's completed. There, right now there are 48 articles. I understand there are some more petition articles to come in. For those who have motor vehicle registrations due during the, um, the renewals during, during the month of uh, January, please plan on registering early at the town clerk's office. They close on Fridays at 11.30 a.m. Uh, please don't wait until the last business yeah. day of the month, which is Jan <laughs> Friday, January 30th, as the lines are very long. And uh, the lines uh, for the end of last month and the first two business days of this month actually ran to the door of the, fr the front door of the building. We just couldn't get them oh, all yeah. in here. People were yep. leaving and coming back later. Um, <clears throat> there's really not a need for that. Get in as soon as you can to get your registrations done. It'll save you a lot of heartache later. For those residents who wish to file for exemptions for elderly veterans and other exemptions for, or deferrals provided by law from property right. taxes, you're encouraged to contact the assessing office at this time for information and necessary forms. That should be done early because some of these processes are a little bit more difficult. Likewise, property owners who qualify for tax deferrals, that is a change in the rate of the tax rate for the beach precinct, should contact the assessor's office or the beach precinct for the necessary forms. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions for the town manager? Select Mosley. I forgot to ask the town clerk today. Do you remember when the filing period is for office? If I turn around and look at the calendar, I can probably tell you it starts on the 21st of January and ends on the 30th. Okay, so the day before the deliberative session. That basically. is correct. 21 to 30. Thank right. you. That's Anything it. else, Selectman like Wilson? No. Okay, sir. 21. No, thank yes, you. Sir. I have a couple things. One, I have a little concern with, in light of our, our budgetary things now, with with, with helping the state with, with, with hauling yes. off that boat. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you know, they have... They have a DOT too, and plenty of trucks and, and equipment. <laughs> and and I, I just have a 
have some concerns, not that I don't want to be a good neighbor and help out. I just have some concerns with the way our, our, our budget looks like it's going. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that would be a draft. Um, what was the other one? I've lost it now. So that was it. We'll come back to you if you All find right, it. Later. Come back to you if you find it, Rusty. I agree with Rusty. I was thinking the exact same thing that uh, the state should be able to do that by themselves. But for the people who live down there, I want to get it out of there. Mm -hmm. So I would hate like heck to get into a squabble with the state and then have that darn thing still be sitting there and those people, you know, who live on that street have to deal with it. So, exactly. you know, one of those things you're between a rock and a hard place. Mr. Welch raises a good point. Thank you for your stewardship and leadership on this issue. We hope that boat sails away and <laughs> uh, addressing the issues with the state, the state that is uh, in dire financial condition um, in their budget cutting. Uh, the police chief brought in his metrics for state performance by Hampton taxpayers. There were 900 uh, such occasions last year. It costs money, and uh, that, again, is just uh, our relationship with the state as it exists, and there doesn't seem much we can do. Uh, you can't get money out of a, uh, a dry stone. So thank you. Any further questions, Rusty, to come back to you? I do remember we have a couple people that are still here in the audience that are probably here for warrant articles. Yeah. Do we need to discuss those tonight? or uh, You need to make a recommendation on warrant articles uh, so we can close the warrant and go to the budget hearing. Mm -hmm. We could okay. just maybe ask them to come up first. Well, we're coming up on uh, uh, the tally votes on the 215 warrant article, so we're going to address those now. We're going to go, if we're done with the town manager's report, we're going to step up and, and thank you, uh, citizens and voters uh, and petitioners. Uh, please stand by for more excitement. Uh, there are 46 articles as it stands now. Uh, the first 11 that we see tonight. So uh, are we skipping new business? I'm happy to move quickly. Uh, please waiver. do, please do, and thank you so much. Under new business, I'll move that we authorize waiving uh, the purchasing policy for the cationic polymer. Two-year bid price is 70200 Only half of that will be spent in 2015. Correct. Sorry. <coughs> All those in favor? Unanimous. And uh, number two, request of New Hampshire DOT and DREAD to allow RS Audley the use of the access road at Ruth Stimson Park, <coughs> access from Bicentennial parking lot for the finishing up of the seawall repairs, and this is a continuation of the agreement that was made with the state last year. That agreement that they repair it back to its original? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a problem. Second. Second bridal. We'll see uh, the uh, initial. Uh, all those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Roman 9, old business. One, tally votes on 2015 Warren articles. I'm going to kind of lead this. We'll lead through it. We'll get down to petition. We're going to start in, in the numbers they go to. Mr. Welch, correct me, admonish me, correct me at will. One through 11 are zoning articles, and it's my understanding we'll take no such position tonight. Is that correct? The the Board of Selectmen does not make a recommendation on zoning articles or on the election of officers. Uh, they are made by yeah. the planning board. Thank you. Article 12, Town Budget, our position on that tonight? You know, that's something you need to vote. Every okay. Article 12, <coughs> you have the ability to vote on every one of the remaining articles from Article 12 forward. Certainly you need to vote by statute on the appropriation articles. In the past, the Board has voted on all the articles. You voted on all, all of them last year. You don't. Thank you. The board's pleasure on Article 12. I have a stipulation here because this is showing the. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Now, oh, that is the budget committee's figure, right? That the is the budget committee's figure. Yes. We okay. have changed it. Can, can we leave this one until next week? No, we got to get we got to get it resolved tonight. And what? And, and, and I want to. I'll move to uh, not uh, recommend. Okay. And there, there, there's a motion. <laughs> And, and I'd like to hear the dollar amounts, but um, what is your point? And I'd like an Let's answer to see you. if there's any changes Wednesday night. We will adapt accordingly, but that's the Budget Committee's problem, not ours. We need to go to the public with a recommendation, Fred, correct? If, if, yes. If, yeah. you, if, you, if the Budget Committee changes this, you have the right to go back and modify mm -hmm. your recommendation. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And the motion if is in, in, in the amount? No, I'm just moving to not recommend. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Article 13, 14, and 15. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. We recommend it. Second. Yeah. Bridal, Waddell, those in favor? 
unanimous. Article 16, equipment purchases. Selectman Wilson, do you have any input? I uh, move that we delete this article from the sequence of the warrant. Is there a second? I will second that. All those in favor? Four. In favor. Uh, that's unanimous. Article 17, a motion? Uh, I will so move Article 17. <coughs> I move to recommend. Second. Second. Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Welch, could you please expound? You had some uh, uh, input on that and semi-redrafted that. Any comments? Article 18 was redrafted, Mr. Chairman, in order to take into consideration a number of different factors. Mm -hmm. There is a, a government grant available for a little under $150,000. Should it not be received, the article will be null and void. And um, we further stipulated in the article that should the bids be returned, and should they exceed the total of the appropriation and the total of the, of the federal grant, that the bid would be null and void. Uh, the article would be null and void, so we wouldn't be raising the money in that case. I will move to recommend with Fred's stipulation. Second, second, it. second by Waddell. All those in favor? Thank you. Article 19, and if we can jump all the way down to 39, I know the board has, has read all of these. A motion? Yeah. Were you, were you, are we on 19? 19. Article 19 I'll through move 39. To recommend. recommend Woolsey. Second. Waddell. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Article 40, Mill Pond Dam petition. Oh, are you taking? He took them as a bulk. All of them? I mean, the rest of the whole. Well, we're down to the petition. That I'm that sorry. covered. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, a, because I have. Just give me one. Yes, second. yes, ma'am. Smile at me for a second. <laughs> Oh, Article 29, may we, uh, may I move to exclude that since that's being paid out of the year-end surplus? May I move to remove oh, yeah. that from Delete. the warrant? Thank you for your exquisite attention to detail. I'll second that. Those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> 29, <coughs> you stand corrected. Uh, and Any I have a quick, quick question on 32. Yes, ma'am. The cemetery lots, oh, I'm sorry. Not, not 32, ignore me. Um, 34. Uh, Article 34. The money for the <coughs> fees uh, for the trustees of the trust funds is already included in the operating budget as it stands. No? no. They, took the, they took the trustees' money out? It's not in the default budget. That's what they adopted. Uh, well, no, they didn't adopt the default budget. Yes, they yes. reconfigured. Well, they reconfigured the town budget to equal a default budget less than one hundred twenty-eight thousand. Oh, okay, all right. So, so leave that, and leave that, and behave myself. Okay, just let me check one more because I hadn't made notes. Take your time. You're doing and very years. well. No, I'm fine. I'm at Article Forty. If you guys are. Thank you. So we've eliminated twenty-nine. Motion, second vote, and now we're down to thirty-nine. We've had that vote, and now we're going to Article Forty, okay. the Mill Dam petition. And traditionally, the board will or will not take a, a, a vote on this, support this. How is that going to go? What's the board's pleasure? Traditionally, what? I didn't well, are we supporting or not supporting? How is this going to work tonight? Well, we have to move to recommend or not. Okay, thank right. you. I'll move Those to recommend it. Okay. Second. Second. Any further comment? Those in favor? Unanimous. No. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, Mary Louise. I'm opposed. I'm opposed. Four. Article 41. Zero. Town clock petitioned. Also move that we uh, recommend. A second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 42. The Vietnam Veterans Moving Memorial petitioned. I'll move that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Article 43, solar array on panel landfill petitioned. Um, that has no dollar value in it. No. So I see no reason to make a determination. Is that appropriate? You have the option not to do that. Yeah, there's, it's there's not an no appropriation dollar, article. It's not a raise and appropriate. Okay, Mr. Welch, just some comment on that, please. Uh, it's been shot by Public Works. What are your What's your sentiment, just for the voters' edification, um, if any? Uh, well, <laughs> the problem is that this is this is a petition warrant article. Um, they want to investigate, as I understand it, 
whether or not a solar array may be erected on a landfill. Mm -hmm. That's a very technical engineering question, and they're willing to do that at no cost to the town. Um, probably is a good deal to end this debate on whether or not we can put a solar array up on that particular hill mm -hmm. uh, with a, a liner underneath it, and, mm -hmm. and I'm told that there are ways that can be done uh, and protect the liner, but that needs to be done with an engineering study. Yeah. It's being proposed to, to do that study at no cost to the town. Thank you. I'll move it that we recommend it. Waddell. I'll second. Second. Griffin. All those in favor? Okay. okay pardon me, Mary. I'm going to abstain because I think it's irrelevant. You have It's not a money article. Okay. Uh, that's four in favor, one abstention. Okay. Thank you. In Child that, ad advocacy, I will move to recommend Article 44. 40, second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous Christmas Parade, Article 45, petitioned. So move. Second. To recommend. We'll give Griffin the second. All those in favor, unanimous. Merry Christmas. Article 46, Cemetery Plow Truck. <laughs> I'll move this. Second. Yeah. Good. Bridal Griffin, all those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. 47, did we do that? No. Nope. It's 47 here. Yes. What is it? Where is it? The town clerk salary petitioned. Where is did you did you bring the new one I gave you? I missed that. <laughs> um, could, um, Mary Louise, do you have that? I I do have it on the new printout. Um, is this duplicating? <coughs> and I just literally don't remember. Jim, was her salary increase factored in by the budget committee? No, no, no. It's, it's not in the default budget. <coughs> okay. It's, it's not. It's not in the budget. Okay. Could someone read the motion, please? I don't have it. Petition of 25 or more registered voters to see if the town will vote to increase the annual salary of the town clerk from 55,219 to 60,188 with the sum of 58,945 to be appropriated for the fiscal year 2015. Should the 2015 proposed municipal budget pass, this warrant article shall be null and okay. void. Nice. Fiscal impact uh, note finance department, the estimated 2015 tax Im impact on $3,726 is .001 per $1,000 value, $1, valuation, one-tenth of one cent per thousand of valuation. Well done, sir. We have a little glitch here, though, because I just asked if it's in the budget. I said, should the proposed, and yeah. it says the proposed municipal budget? It's not in What's the budget. the budget committee's budget? It was, well, I well, think when the petition was done, <coughs> uh, it was anticipated that the budget committee, by everybody, would amend the existing submitted budget by the selectmen. They didn't do that. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, I, how can we make sure that this is it's correct? It's a positioned article. You can't change it. I understand that, but the the person who has <clears throat> petitioned it yeah. could take it back and mm -hmm. correct it before tomorrow night. If all the petition is on the article, so <coughs> <That's> <coughs> correct. excuse oh, me. Yeah, so we may want to let that petitioner yep. know yep. that if they want to get and. I would and suggest we're, that we... We're not we meeting tomorrow, Rusty. So we yeah, we are meeting tomorrow. We are meeting tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Well, we are meeting To, to take care of any That's petition right. right. that come so in. So I would You're suggest right. that, yeah. that we, we hold off on this one okay. and advise the petitioner. the petitioner. Yeah. There is no motion. There is no second. We will deal hold with it. this tomorrow if it comes aboard again. Good. How about uh, number 48? Deed restriction removal petition. That deals with a restriction put on by the Board of Selectmen many years ago. Someone please read the uh, petition. The petition of John and Judith Doherty and at least 25 other registered voters shall the town of Hampton remove the deed restriction number, number four relating to allowing only single family dwellings to be placed on the lot for the limited purpose of allowing the owners of two seasonal dwellings at 3 Toppin Street tax map number 131, lot number 502, to replace one existing failing seasonal dwelling with property built year-round dwelling such that the owners can re relocate and retire to the town of Hampton. The new dwelling will meet all the local building and zoning ordinance or codes. There are currently two dwellings on said lot. Further to authorize and direct the Board of Selectmen to execute, deliver, and record notice of this vote in the Rockingham County deeds at no cost to the town. Majority vote required. 
I. I'd like uh, Mr. Welch's opinion, please. It does require you to <coughs> take an action. It removes a current protective restriction on a piece of property mm -hmm. placed by the Board of Selectmen, so I think you probably should take some action to either recommend or not recommend, at least with regards to the action that was put on by the board, a prior Board of Selectmen. However, however, <coughs> I, d I can't tell from reading this whether deed restriction number four relates just to this piece of property or whether it's an overarching <coughs> removal of a restriction. Could, could we perhaps get a, a better synopsis and, and address this tomorrow evening? I think we could. Yeah. And, 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 and get uh, more, more input from town mm -hmm. council and you yeah. and uh, butters, a, a little bit more synopsis. Thank you, sir. So we'll address that tomorrow evening yeah. for that, number 48, That's as right. submitted. Petition. Thank you. That closes that evolution. Any further old business? I got some new business. <clears throat> All right. One thing. Stand by for that. Let me clear old business, please, sir. Any any further old business? Okay. okay. Seeing none, go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the board has received a petition to lay out a particular roadway. Actually, we've received, I think, three petitions. Mm -hmm. One is to lay out, one is not to lay out, and the other is to um, dissolve the uh, encumbrance on the roadway. Um, I'm not sure of the statutory reference, but... Uh, they all deal with Lot B at the end of Stowcroft Road. The suggestion of Town Council and myself is that we prepare uh, a hearing for these matters sometime in the month of February after we give proper and due notice. I will second. Second. Second by Bridal. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, sir. That's Thank it. you. Thank you, sir. You have but to ask. Thank you, ma'am. The time is now 2025. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Oh. Second. Second by Bartle. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Tomorrow at 5 p.m.